So, good morning from Costa Rica. Phoenix just saw this big old grasshopper. I don't even know where it went, but it was ginormous. She named him Hopper. Today I wanted to make a video to talk about a couple of different things because my content lately has been centered around you know, being a single mom and I wanted to come in and set the record straight. I want to set the record straight today because I want every I want you to know that I 100% honor and value a divine unionship and I think it's so beautiful when you have a, a partnership and there is the energy is reciprocated and like everything just flows and it's and it's amazing so that's the the foundation of today's topic but I do want to start by saying you know self-love y'all Self-love is the highest frequency. Self-love is the highest vibration. Self-love is so important. And the more you love yourself, the more you're inspired to do things that are in your highest and best interest. The more you're inspired to do things that are best for you. And let me say, like sometimes you have to make a decision that breaks your heart. Right? When you love yourself so much, like sometimes you have to make a decision that absolutely breaks your heart. I know that sounds contradicting, but it's just, it's life, it's our reality. And I say that because, you know, I had to make a decision that absolutely broke my heart, but I needed to protect my peace. Yeah, Hopper, I had to do what was best to protect my peace. So yeah, self-love is amazing and the more you you bask in you and what you're deserving of and the more that you honor who you are and what you deserve the more decisions you have to make that are uncomfortable sometimes so removing yourself removing your presence from a place where you don't feel loved where you don't feel valued where you are disrespected is also self-love and so today uh, I was just really inspired to talk about this because like I said a lot of my previous posts have talked about you know my transition within the last seven months and relocating back to Costa Rica and you know things just shifted like I, I was in a, a, a beautiful what I felt was a beautiful union and that's my pattern I get attached to how I want things to be. I get attached to the idea of how things to, can be opposed to the reality of what it really is. And the last couple of months showed me that, like stop getting attached to the idea of how things should be and get real with yourself on what it is, right? So I'm not ever gonna point fingers when things don't go the way that I wanted them to go. I'm always gonna point a finger at myself. What in me, what within me attracted that? right because every relationship whether it's a business relationship whether it's a friendship whether it's a romantic relationship like no matter what every relationship is meant to either teach us something or present something that we're supposed to heal from because life is all about healing and healing is a journey baby <laughs> like we don't ever stop healing so in my case in life in general generally speaking I'm learning, I'm healing, and I'm okay with that. I'm fine with that. So heavy emphasis on self-love, heavy emphasis on removing yourself from environments that just do not align with your highest and best interests. That's self-love. Uh, going back to me creating my, my content lately. So I get a lot of love from a lot of people I don't know. And I wanna say thank you so much for the positive energy the positive words, the encouragement. I received a message from a, a lady who was just thanking me for healing out loud. She was saying that I'm the voice for the voiceless. And I was like, wow, it really hit home for me because this woman doesn't, doesn't know me from a grain of salt, doesn't know me from a can of paint. And she sent me a message saying that I am the voice for the voiceless. And I wrote her back and I was like, what do you mean by that? And she basically said, you know, she's been suffering in silence and she resonated so deeply with my story. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, you wanna come say hello? Yeah, where's Hopper? Oh, hi, Hopper. Hi, Hopper. Y'all should see my, the, the grasshopper is huge, but I'm not about to go pick it up. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> so the lady told me that I was the voice for the voiceless and I was like, wow. And I asked her what she meant by that. And she said she resonated so heavy with my story 
but she never had the courage or the strength to even speak up for herself and I was like wow and it made me think about why I made such bold decisions within the last couple of months why I chose to say okay yes I'm in my third trimester I'm pregnant I'm about to be a mother of two but I'm about to leave this situation with my partner because it's not for me why did I say that why did I do that because my children my daughter phoenix she's gonna be two in april and my youngest daughter at the time she was in my womb um but now she is three weeks old today and uh when i was thinking about her and i was in you know going through a lot of the things that i was going through i was asking myself like if my girls came to me and said mommy i'm going through this this is what i'm feeling this is how i'm being treated what do i do what would my voice as a mother how would i represent them how would i show up and support them and then i realized like the same advice the same support the same voice that i would do give to my daughters i gotta be that for me right i gotta mother me i'm talking about mothering my children but what about me right now in this moment so decisions that have been made for me for my children were not spontaneous they were not out of the out of the blue it wasn't something random this is something that has been you know an ongoing thing and and it was a lot of uncomfortability you know in that and let me tell y'all i don't want my girls saying oh mama i want to be a single mother and have babies by different people like i don't want them to say have that story i want my girls to be supportive I want my girls to be like, oh, mama, I met this man that loves me, loves the essence of who I am, is sure about me, supports all my wildest dreams, loves me for who I am. And I want her to be proud to give that man a lot of children. And when she's giving that man children, I want her to have the, right? I want her to be treated like a princess during that time. So being a single mama too baby is not something i'm trying to glorify let me let me set the record straight that's the record i'm setting straight today being a single mother or two is definitely not something i'm trying to promote or glorify heck no because if i had it the way that i wanted and the way that i wanted for my girls oh guess what they're gonna be treated like prince a princess queens they're gonna be, have everything up under the sun that they desire they're going to feel loved and supported they would they will not be disrespected and the thing is it's because they they deserve that and so thinking about how i want my girls to be treated and thinking about how i was currently allowing someone to treat me i kept saying oh man like i feel like the life is being sucked out of me like i kept saying that so many times for so many months like I feel like my soul was being sucked out of my body and one day my sister was like well stop giving him the straw I'm like god dang I guess I am giving him I guess I am giving this person the straw so if you feel like you know there's something draining your energy or something sucking the soul out of you whether it's a job whether it's a, a relationship whether it's a friendship guess who's giving them the straw you are and you give them the straw by allowing it so i had to get so clear on my boundaries right i had to get clear on what it is i allow and i have to lead by example how can i sit up here and tell my girls oh baby this is what you deserve don't settle for less and i'm sitting up here like wanting to not be alive i'm sitting up here literally feeling like I don't know who I am anymore, losing my joy, like losing my desire to dance because when I dance, I'm told I'm doing it for clout. Like, no, I'm doing this for happiness. No, you, it's, it's for clout, it's not. So then questioning that, and then, you know, being, you know, constantly being told I'm not doing enough or you're doing, like, I'm naturally, uh, a giver and I, I'm a acts of service girl right and I just love to just do so yeah you you a person might love red shoes let's just say use that as an example but I'm the person I'm gonna get you the red shoes but I'm also get your outfit that I think you're gonna look super flying 
and to match the red shoes i'm gonna get you a hat to match the red shoes because i just love to give gifts and i love to make people feel good and i love for you to look good and so you know being that type of person and operating in that spirit and then being told you're doing things i don't ask you to do it's like oh let me stop <laughs> don't do that no more so it's now i am not given the foundation or the platform to like be my true authentic self and those things drain you right and again this could be you know in a business whatever when you start to feel depleted to the point where you look in the mirror and you don't recognize yourself baby it might be time to change your environment and so in this case for me um just speaking my 100 percent truth i had to stop people pleasing you know i had to learn to stop oversharing like i didn't even realize that People will take things that you share with them out of confidence and out of love and, and use it against you. So now I've learned don't overshare, right? Like don't compromise. And the most important thing, don't change who you are for anything. And so, like I said, I'm never pointing fingers at anyone. I'm always pointing the finger at myself because there's some type of vibrational frequency or something within me that's attracting that lesson. And the lesson will continue to present itself if you don't learn and do something different. So what I have learned is I keep doing the same old thing and that same old thing is getting attached to the idea of what could be. That same old thing is people pleasing, right? That same old thing is saying, all right, okay, I love pineapples, but we're not gonna eat, I'm not gonna eat pineapples no more because you don't love, like, no, be unapologetically freaking you because that's what you deserve to be and my girls have really really wedged that in my my brain more than ever because when, as i watch them grow up i want them to unapologetically be them go outside butt naked if you want to right go take a bath in the rain baby girl go take over the world like there is no limit there is no lack and at the end of the day the person that my babies choose i want them to be how they ride or die it's like no matter what i got you not at the end of the day telling them you're a terrible person or you're a terrible mother and then the next day i love you and then the next day after that i don't know why i even chose you and you know that mind game they don't they don't deserve that so why would i settle for that hello like why would i settle for that and so I was a little bit apprehensive about really speaking my truth, sharing my truth, because as soon as you start to set boundaries, you become the bad guy, right? Like as soon as you start to, to say, hey, this is what I'm not going to allow. You cannot control me. This is not what I'm going to do. You become the bad guy. And then there's this narrative painted about you that people may believe, who cares? But people that have the, that, that sense of discernment, you know the truth. And so I don't have to say anything because spirit and energy speaks louder than words. But I did wanna come and make this video today to set the record straight. The, the record straighting is, you know, sometimes you have to make a decision that breaks your heart, but whatever you have to do to protect your heart and your peace is what you gotta do. And with that being said, you know, don't look at, I encourage you and myself continuously, like not to look at situations as terrible, like everything is working out for you. At the end of the day, we are presented with things that are meant to build us up. And that very thing that was meant to destroy you is really the thing that was meant to build you up. And I have had some beautiful friend relationships over the years, like beautiful friendships, beautiful. I've only ever had like two beautiful romantic relationships. One was 11 years ago and the other was five years ago. And those two relationships actually were the foundation to my sanity in my most recent relationship, right? Because things that I was experiencing recently i was like oh like i know that this isn't normal i know that this isn't a normal response i know that this is a normal treatment because 11 years ago you know i was I, I was immature i will say that i was immature i made a lot of immature decisions but i wasn't ever treated this way i still was treated with compassion and with love i was treated like a newborn baby almost 
And I love that. And that's something I never forgot. That's something that never left me. That person laid a beautiful foundation. I'm grateful till this day for that because had I not had that experience 11 years ago, I would think that this treatment is normal. And yeah, we wanna say, keep the family together. And you know, um, it's about the children, but that's how we continue to recycle trauma. Like, yeah, we want to, we, unity is everything. I'm the biggest advocate for unity. There is so much power in unity. When I tell you I have experienced the power of unity so much within the last month, it's insane. And so when it comes to a divine partnership with the masculine and the feminine, there's so much power in that so much power in that and i'm a huge advocate for it however unity not at the expense of my peace i'm not doing that like i'm not i'm not allowing anyone to just treat me like i'm disposable and treat me like i'm nothing and so um even when it comes down to my girls just being completely transparent and open um phoenix's father let me know from the front door like out the gate like hey I wasn't ready for this baby so you on your own but here we are almost two years later and the man has came around like I, I don't know what I was thinking I apologize can I get pictures of her she's beautiful wow when can I come and visit and I'm like oh huh is this the same person mind you before Phoenix was conceived we were like the best of friends like her daddy is funny as I don't know what and we would just have a good time. So I was grieving losing a friend because I was pregnant. So now I looked at pregnancy as a bad thing because of his response. But, you know, having my girl, having my baby Phoenix was the most beautiful thing that could have ever happened to me. And fast forward now, um, giving birth to seven, you know, her father and I communicated when she was born. And we talked about four days after he was born, but we haven't heard from him. He hasn't checked in. Like we've sent pictures. We've, you know, asked for certain things for some support and no response, nothing. So I would have rather being told from the door, like I don't want nothing to do it. So I could mentally prepare for, you know, doing it alone opposed to like the emotional and mental abuse hello i don't know if that's the word but with that being said you know i found myself processing that like dang is it is it is the child not important enough for you to put whatever you feel about me aside and just check on her but that's okay yes baby yes uh-huh yeah you you dancing uh -huh. Look, say hey y'all. How y'all doing? Say what's up from Costa Rica. Uh-huh. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. So um, That was from today? Hopper. Oh, Hopper? Yeah. Is he still over there? Yeah. Well, tell him I said hi and maybe he wants some water. You want to see if he wants some water? Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, just removing what I've learned is to remove expectations as well. Hopper. So, I've just learned. So, Hopper? Yeah. Uh-huh. I'm uh, all okay. Oh, okay. Okay. So mm -hmm. you wanna take the um the watermelons to the back with Auntie Juba and get Hopper and take the watermelons and the pineapples to the back? Come on, they wanna eat and Hopper wants to eat. And the caterpillar. Go check on the caterpillar. And if you see some raspberries, can you bring me some raspberries? All right, thank you. The saying, yeah, removing expectations, right? Like removing expectations and just being able to just move, ease and flow. 
and not have any any regrets because oh that was another thing i was like just feeling so much regret like oh, i keep choosing the wrong partners like oh my god i want a family i want to have i, I want to so i want a union i want a partnership i'm not glorifying single motherhood like this for the streets who wants that like no like i just have gave birth to a baby like i want a massage i want a masculine massage i want my feet massaged i'm grateful for my my the women in my life but there's just something that the masculine can can bring to the table that the feminine cannot and so when it comes to the girls they will understand who their fathers are we have a book and their pictures are in the book and i'm like phoenix this is who this is this is your granddaddy and you know she knows who her people are seven is also already learning the faces of the people she's also she also has a book and we're going through and showing her her family because we are in costa rica but it's important for me to make it feel as if nobody is ever away and the people that we love people very close to us have our exact location so anybody can pull up at any time and you know my stepdad is coming this weekend that's amazing my sister is coming next week and other people have where we are as well and are more than welcomed so there's definitely not a i'm not that mama that's like don't communicate with us no like i'm not blocking i'm not doing nothing like the, the phone is open the line of com communication is open um, like I said, Phoenix's father is planning to come in April for her second birthday, which is a really cool thing. But I'm just committed to being my truest and most authentic self. And after the lady sent me the message and said, thank you for sharing your story. You're the voice for the voiceless. I felt even more inspired, like not to be quiet. Why do we suppress what we're going through? Why do we silence ourselves? Because we're afraid of how people will respond. People maybe tell us to be silent. We're embarrassed or we're in shame. But no, heal out loud. Hello, this is a season of healing out loud. Telling your story. Being apologetic, unapologetically you. Why not? You are so beautiful. Your story is beautiful. You are wonderfully made. And everything that we experience isn't to be guilty or shameful. It's to learn and to elevate and to evolve. We are multi-dimensional beings and we're created to evolve we're created to learn we're, and at the end of the day everything is always working out and everything's just always working out so i encourage you to really tap into your spirit and really 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 be unapologetically you I encourage you to do everything that is in alignment with your highest and best interest and just just be you out loud just be you out loud i had a conversation with my therapist and she told me that she loved seeing me dance and she said that when she noticed that um you know i was seeing her dancing videos all the time she was like she noticed when i wasn't she wasn't getting things anymore and she didn't see me on social media like just being out loud she was like something's really not right here but she didn't reach out to me she was waiting for me to reach out to her and when i finally reached out she was like i knew something i knew something was a little bit off and it's because i lost my joy i lost my i just lost it i lost it because i feel like it wasn't right my partner in particular i felt like they knew what was best because this is something that i've always wanted so i felt like the most high was gifting me with exactly what i wanted a beautiful family um, a beautiful man, um, a leader. I felt like I was finally getting what my heart truly desired, but what I really got was another lesson. What I really got was, you know, a reflection of me. What I really got was conviction to my pattern. And I also was convicted as well, because what kind of hypocrite am I to like, <laughs> to change everything about me and and not be myself but tell my daughters to be themselves hypocrite so again not pointing any fingers at all at all i'm pointing the fingers at me at me i have nothing but love i have nothing but good things to say this is my experience this is my journey this is my choice and that is okay that is okay and again i was so apprehensive about speaking my truth because 
when I even started to post certain things, ooh, the hateful messages that I got consistently. I'm like, oh my God, this is awful. Like, this is terrible. Like, how do you even have these kind of words to extend to another person, especially a person carrying a child? And so it was just like baffling. So it's, that was another way of silencing. And it's just not, it's just, it's just not fair. So be you live out loud, heal out loud. You don't know who's watching. You don't know who your story is going to impact. And, you know, as soon as you set boundaries, hey, people might not respond the way you want them to respond, but that's okay. Boundary setting is the best possible thing that you can do. And I encourage you to do that. I know, I know you're gonna get everything that your heart desires. Your intentions being pure, your intentions being in alignment, you are going to receive everything that you're deserving of. You, you know, you have to choose whether or not, you know, what you allow and what you don't allow, if that makes sense. That's kind of been like my, my biggest lesson. Are you going to allow and not allow? And I am committed to living through love, on love, spreading love, and I don't want anything less than that. And I don't want my girls to be in a position or an environment that is anything less than that. Golly, nothing less than that. And that has been my, I just, I love my babies. I love my babies and I'm so thankful. It's so amazing how they brought me strength and how my baby seven, how seven brought me a voice. Like I'm so passive. And I'm a, I'm a, I have in the past, I'm not a people pleaser anymore, but in the past I've been a people pleaser. So I'm like, okay, yes, all right. Like, okay, I'll, I'll change this. I'll change my hair. Okay, I'll stop dancing. Like, okay, I'll stop everything. But my baby seven, what brought me an energy of like, mama, mama, like, where's your freaking voice? Where is your voice? And so you know, just making a choice for what's in my highest and best interest what's in the girl's highest and best interest has been the best thing ever. And it's the best thing for you. Making choices that are in alignment with what is in your highest and best interest is what's in your highest and best interest. And it's the best thing you can do for yourself, okay? So I hope that you found some value in today's live. And I hope I set the record straight. <laughs> I hope I set the record straight. And um, just know that, you know, everything really is always working out. I say it all the time. You're probably sick of me saying it. But the truth is, everything really is always working out. And, hey, that's that's just the secret. <laughs> so, I'm sorry. That's how the story ends. It works out. Anyway, I'm sending everyone on here love. I'm sending you love. I'm sending, sending you healing waves. I'm sending you just pure peace because you're deserving of it. You're deserving of it. And that's the thing. And I'm going to end with this. The universe is going to give you what you feel like you deserve. So if you're in a situation and it's not ideal, you have to ask yourself, is this what I believe I deserve? Like, do I deserve this? Do I deserve to be belittled? Do I deserve to be treated like I'm, I'm the dirt? Like, do I, do I really deserve this? And so that gets comes back to you knowing your worth you knowing your worth and standing on your worth and just being unapologetic with your worth will also help you to lay the foundation for what you deserve right so the universe is going to give you what you feel like you deserve and let me tell you from my own personal experience when i had that mindset shift and i was like no this is what i deserve the doors just started to fly open i'm like oh, what door I oh all the doors open let's go and things just unfolded and i'll just use like a real-time example i made a decision um that i deserve something much better for my mental health for my overall health for my children i just deserve better did not know what was going to come next did not have a plan i just said hey this is my intention this is what i deserve and all the doors just flew open and um came back to costa rica picked up right where we left off and all, next thing you know it started to like just make its way to me and i'm grateful oh i'm so grateful and that was confirmation that when you believe that you deserve something the universe is like here you go baby so that's what i'm going to end with today you are going to receive what you feel like you deserve and don't give up when it gets hard don't give up in the midst because that's when you are truly being built 
that's when you're truly being tested and that's gonna build your strength, build your resilience. And so just keep pushing, keep knowing and know that, you know, there's victory on the other side of whatever you're going through. You're being prepared so that you can be in receiving mode so that you can be grateful for, you know, what the universe has presented to you. So anyway, I love y'all. And if, it res if anything resonated with you, share it, comment below what stood out to you the most. And I'll definitely see you in a future video. Maybe I'll see some of y'all in Costa Rica here in the near future. I don't know. But I'm um, wishing everyone the best, truly from the bottom of my heart. And I just appreciate, you know, all the love and the support. And I encourage you to heal out loud. And I encourage you to be unapologetically joyful, be unapologetically you. And don't change who you are for nobody. And just remember, everything is always working out. All right. Peace out.